Hey guys, Kojo here and I am back once again for another video and um, last video was Leroy Hemming and we're still going strong with the 2019 cars and here we have Bill Revs from the Cotterpin series. Now not as much as a, a main character as Leroy, although Leroy is kind of um, still a background character, but this, this guy here is even more of a background character than Leroy just being uh, a simple old station wagon, but this guy is really awesome so um, I uh, purchased him about a week and a bit ago or something and then I've just been waiting to do the review but um, I have the Richie Guns at the Gasprin Next Gen on the way and Steve Herschel, or Herschel however his name is quite pronounced so I thought I'd better do the review before I get uh, too many cars lined up because I want to kind of space the reviews out so it's not one after the other so it gives you guys more sort of content over a, a bigger period of time but um, yeah here we have Bill Revs he is a part of the Cotterpin series you can see him in the background um, in the obviously Cotter pin, but you can also see him at the Fund Hollow Speedway as well. But then again, they are near each other, so he could have gone there to watch the show and then gone and chilled in the in the bar. So <laughs> you never know. But that's pretty cool. I really love the colour for this series as well. Um, how it's pink and it just looks really really cool. Um, I do have another car from this series as well, Xanadu Bumpers, which will probably be the next review out. Um, and I also got a one of the trainee races as well, um, which will be cool for a video also. Um, if we take a look at the packaging, we have the Disney Pixar Cars logo, the cotter pin bar up the top. I really wish we did have the numbers still on the boxes because I don't know, it felt like you had more of an indication of what's coming. Say there was, it said there's eight in the series and say five had been released, you kind of knew that, okay, we're only getting three more. Whereas now it's like, who knows how many more cotter pin cars we're going to get. And obviously there's some that are probably the, the prototype pictures, but you don't know for sure whether you're going to get five more, two more, one more, you just, you don't know. But and then again, they may bring it back, they may not. We have the blurred background as well and his art, which looks really nice. I love how they included the little bits of rust and stuff all over him which is awesome there is another car very similar to him as well motor turner in one of the newer cases which is a female um car as we go to the back here we see cotterpin bar and grill with a logo and the disney pixar cars logo we have cotterpin bar and bill um, <laughs> bar and grill up there also um this is a cotterpin that's what it is when you have you see um race cars they will have hood pins rather than a regular latch to save weight and the cotter pin is essentially what goes through that hood um, little piece to lock the bonnet shut. So nice play on words by Disney there, um, which is awesome, or Pixar, shall I say. Now we look at the other cars um, here. Also, let's just have a quick look. It says, friends of the late great Fabio Tutson Hornet gather together at the cotter pin bar. Or at the cotter pin, as it just says. So that's really, really cool. Um, now these are the cars we have on the back, we have Xanadu Bumpers, I can't quite remember, is it Jenny Tolan, I think is the name of that car? Yeah, I think it's Jenny Tolan, something like that. really, really cool, I can't wait to get this car. Uh, she's got like a different coloured door and some of the um, clear coat of the paint is missing, which is awesome. Um, Vanden Kerr, and he's going to be coming out in the next case to be released. Uh, awesome as well, I love the different coloured panels at the back. And Andrew Vrooman, who I, is the one I want to get the most, so... He, I'm very much looking forward to. So this series, in my opinion, has got very, very big potential, or has, because we've seen some great cars, even though they're just regular cars. I'm, I'm glad they're kind of getting away from the races and, well, I say that, they're my favorite cars they've done, but I, I appreciate that they're doing regular, normal vehicles, uh, as opposed to just ones that are kind of unrealistic. So uh, that, that's pretty cool. I, I like the fact they're doing this. Um, but yeah, that's enough for the packaging. So without further ado, let's get Bill Revs out of the packaging. Now I'd also quickly like to point out one thing I've noticed with the newer Thailand cars from um, more of the newer cases, there is no line anymore in the plastic where it folds open so the cars can kind of fall out because obviously they can't make it too tight because you'll never be able to get the car up because before you'd just be able to bend it and then take it out. So I don't know, I guess we're saving money and this plastic kind of more rigid but I, I don't know what the, the point of it is but <laughs> there you go. 
All right then, so here is Bill out of the packaging. Looks really, really cool. I've just really seen him in the package over the last few days, so it's nice to get him unboxed. He looks really, really cool. Great indeed. One of the things I could sort of see straight away is I, uh, the way that Thailand do the wheels where there's no hubcaps on because they for some reason they have to have the holes in them for the way they do the axles or something like that of Thailand because as you can see on the packaging, they're all orange. There's no, there's like a hubcap where there's, but it, I guess if it's something they have to do, then fair enough. It doesn't look terrible like that. It just probably would look a little bit cooler if they did it how it was on the packaging, but that is completely fine. Um, also, the eye plate doesn't look bad. It, I think it's very noticeable on Bill, um, especially with his colour as well. This model in general, maybe not so much on motor because the, the colour is kind of easier to match. But still, I feel, and I've also noticed some Thailand cars I don't even think have eye plates at all. So I think it, it's just whatever I guess is more practical to not do. or say, it's, I guess it's all for saving costs, really. That's the main reason they moved that. The production over to Thailand was to save money because I don't think they Mattel in general have been doing as well which is understandable in this modern age but anyway let's get away from that and talk about um, Bill here himself so like I said earlier he appears in the Cotopin bar just chilling out I guess with some of his friends M uh, maybe some of his friends are the ones that are going to be released on the back here uh, like Vanden Kerr and cars like that we, we don't know so yeah he's just chilling there I guess he's uh, into racing obviously he's into like the Thunder Hollow stuff and maybe into the old classic racing as well. So he just, in his spare time, he just goes down to the to the Cotterpin bar and just chills out. So that's pretty cool. I, I did really like that scene. It, was, it seemed like a really cool bar, like bar that you'd want to go to. So yeah, that, that was pretty cool. And seeing him in there was nice as well. I'm glad they included that scene because it was a, a cool one indeed. Um, but yeah, apart from that, um, he only really appears, I'm pretty sure, at the Thunder Hollow Speedway. I'll put pictures up on both if I can find them. So yeah, he gets around a bit, which is uh, pretty cool. It's funny, all these cars that you just don't notice, really, unless uh, you see them as a die car. So, like, one car I did notice, for sure, was Andrew v was Andrew Vrooman. It's <laughs> such a hard name to say. Um, when he, when I think McQueen and Cruz and Smokey first entered, he's one of the first cars to turn around. So I noticed him straight away, and I just knew that... I would really want him when he became a diecast, so I'm glad it was sooner rather than later. But yeah, Bill, I didn't really notice as much, but I guess looking back on the photos that I put on the video, uh, it will kind of remind me and maybe remind some of you guys of where he actually appears. But yeah, that's that's pretty much all for his appearances. Uh, so let's get on to the physical review. So up front here, we have a separate piece, if I can just focus in. Separate piece for the uh, mouth here, like the bumper which looks pretty cool. I like how they're doing this, as long as it doesn't like make it look bad, So, which it's not really. This looks really nice, and you can see his teeth there and some of the black inside of bits you can't see. Now, we have his indicator lights here on either side, his blinkers, but his headlights are covered up, so maybe they're um, when he turns on his lights, these covers go up, or I'm not too sure, because obviously he couldn't drive with no lights. We have a really, really nice detailed grille here, I must say. A little bit blurry, but not too bad. It is all bumpy and textured as well. Now we have a bit of rust around the hood lining sort of here, and with different panels where they attach, which is really, really nice detail. One of the main reasons I wanted to pick this guy up. Now you can see his eyes here. They're kind of glossy, which is not very good, because the rest of the body is, is a matte finish. And a bit blurry as well, but he's got some nice hazel eyes and a pretty just chilled out expression in general. Does kind of match the art, which is awesome. Uh, as we come to this little bit here as well, you can see rust just above his eyes. Separate pieces for the wind mirrors as well, which is awesome. Now as we come to the side, probably one of the best features is we have this wood panelling. Looks super, super cool. You can see all the details there. It doesn't even look too blurry. It does, I suppose, with wood grain. You have the name grain in it, so it's meant to look grainy anyway, which looks awesome. We have the silver trim all around it as well. So I guess you could say Motor and Bill are different models because Motor Turner doesn't have this wood panelling, which means there, there is no bump here because you can feel the prominent bump. Those of you who have this die cast will know there is a bump here, uh, as you can probably see down the line of the car there, which separates the wood panelling. So Motor is technically a different model because she doesn't have this, so it's all flush, which is pretty cool. Uh, his wheels down here as well. I love the Thailand wheels. I know I complained earlier about the hole, but I mean the detail. And like, look at that. It's, I mean, it doesn't really relate to the, the image, but I mean, on the actual car, you can see it's all the dirt and all the grime from over the years. It's not just solid orange, which is awesome. Uh, we have all the specks of, sort of dirt and rust down here as well. Not too bad as some rusty cars that we've seen. 
Nice, um, you can see the two doors on the side there with the windows looking awesome. You can see more rust up here. Door handles are uh, pretty shiny still though, to be fair. Come to the back, sadly there's no uh, license plate, but you can see some um, rust up here. Not much for the roof, just bits of rust. And you can see where the tailgate opens there, there's rust on him and some dreary old lights that look like they need replacing. But we've got a pretty cool bumper, separate piece as well, which makes, which actually does look really awesome. Same is a uh, story for the other side, just a wood panelling. This looks to be exactly the same both sides, maybe. I think it probably, probably pretty much is. And we have these awesome wheels once again. Now, as for the base, I love what Thailand are doing with the thickness of the wheels. Because I'd imagine if this was a China release, these wheels would have been rather skinny on this guy. But they are quite thick and durable. Uh, we have a shiny rivet at the front, which makes a change from Thailand, but then you go back and see all the paint on the bottom. I've noticed, you can probably see in the light, this base kind of sparkles a bit as well. We have the Made in Thailand, Mattel and all the stuff. You can see his exhaust there, which is awesome, goes all the way to the front. You can see the axle and the transmission on the bottom. Uh, you can't really see the exhaust sticks out, but... You can see it when you do the bomb. We have the uh, date stamp as well, the 50th week of 2018. And the box is actually the first week of, as you can see, of 2019. So the box was actually made a little while after this guy. Um, but then again, that kind of makes sense because we saw some of the prototypes in 2018 and didn't have him finished in a box. So I reckon this guy was made quite a bit before he was sort of finalized which makes sense because I suppose they're testing out the model because if two cars are going to have the model, they want to get it right, I suppose. So yeah, that is all about it for Bill. Very cool car indeed. I love that we've got a wooded station wagon. So that's awesome. Uh, yeah, like I said, great series. I can't wait to see where else they go with this series in the future. But yeah, anyway, guys, that is all for this review. I really hope you did enjoy. Next one will be on Xanadu bumpers from the same series. You guys may see a little cameo of Bill back in that video as well, which should be awesome. So with that all said and done, I hope you guys really did enjoy this video. Um, thank you for all the support once again I've had on my videos. And as always, guys, I'll see you in the next Diecast review.